Hello there everybody, this is Ananya and today let's go ahead and build this really, really exciting project. Now I'm sure that almost every single one of you out there at some point of your lives have made a website, no matter how simple it is. And we have always used HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. And for all the Python lovers, we have either used Django or let's say Flask to maintain the website and develop it. But what if I told you, you can do all of that, all of the HTML and CSS and JavaScript and the Django or the Flask without actually using them. And what you see open on the screen right now, and you can see PyWebIO standing for input output, does exactly that for you. You can go ahead and install this library and make web applications so easily, like literally so easy. So the, as you can see, it's written that PyWebIO in stand, again stands for input output. So you can take user input and show outputs on the browser. So let's say today we will be building a very simple game, a jumble word game. So instead of playing it in the terminal, or making a Kintor application and playing it on that, we will be playing it on the net. So let's go ahead. So as per usual, I will be pro providing you with certain snippets of the code and some you will be writing it. Deal? Okay. Here are the first few lines. So you will obviously have to have PyWebIO installed. This is the command you run. As simple as that, no complications. And all of this that you see, Till the function choose, I will be providing it to you because these are all stuff that you do not have to logically understand, right? So these are just hard coded stuff. A quick run through, we need the random module and also input and output modules from PyWebIO. A few variables that we need to declare, which will be global later on, that is total, pp1 and turn. We'll understand what they are later on. And the player name, okay? So the player name, will be taken as an as an user input on the web. So how do we do that? So this is basically a PyWeb input command. It's exactly the same as the Python input command. Only thing is you can go ahead and give a type out here. So type can be text, number, float, int, anything. All right, so for the name of the user, I'm gonna go ahead with text. The function choose gives a list of words which will be jumbled later on and which we have to decrypt as a part of the game and random words will be picked and returned. That's all it does. So you can just go ahead and directly copy up till here from a text file that'll that you will find below. Next, let's go ahead and write the function jumble. Now, go ahead and do a little bit of typing now. As the function name says, we will be jumbling up the letters of the word. How do we do that? So into random word, we will be sampling the word itself and we will be providing the second parameter as the length of the word, okay? So first random.sample, to that you pass word and the length of the word. This will in turn give us a list of all the letters. So what do we have to do now? Join them back without any space. So just give, give two simple single quotes and join the random word. Hence we get the jumbled word as the string format and return jumbled. Now comes the function thank. So what it does is after the game ends, or let's say the user doesn't want to play anymore, we will just be printing the scores and some complimentary statements along with it. Just let's say you're great, you played great and all of that. Now, if you all do know CSS, and I'm sure you do, you probably do recognize this statement, don't you? So what we are doing is, since we want an output this time, we do not want any input from the user, we show outputs in PyWebIO on the browser using put text. Okay, so put underscore text. And to that, we can apply the style. So we can add the color, the font size, whatever bold, italic, just as we do in CSS and our work will be done. All right, so this thank function, again, quickly find it in the text file below. Now comes the main play function. This is something that you'll have to write. <laughs> Never mind. So you have some global variables, the ones that we declared on top, that is total, pp1, which will actually be the score, and you do not need turn. This is unnecessary. Sorry for that. And flag. Flag will keep in check if the user wants to continue playing or not. We'll have a clear idea of what flag is a little later on. 
Now the encourage list will have a statement such as great, uh, the next word is coming up or great effort and so on. So what you can do is just create a list. You can add in words like great, super, fantastic, excellent, all of that. Now what I'm doing is I will be putting six words at a stretch. So after six words are done, the user will get an option if they want to continue, continue or not. So hence I loop in the range zero to seven. And each time I keep incrementing the value of total by one. So total is basically the total number of words that the user is playing. Correct or wrong, we do not care about that. So we have the function choose, we get that into picked word and into, into the variable qn, we get the jumbled word in turn. Then we say put text and your challenge is, and we pass the qn variable into that to actually print the word. And we take the answer as an input. Now, as we already saw, input and our type will be text itself. We do not want numbers. Now comes the logical parts. Now, if the answer is correct, that if answer is equal to equal to the picked word, we increase the point of the user and we print out a random encouragement. So what I'll do is, just for uh, simplicity, I'll go ahead and add this if block for you all. Okay, this, this one I'll be providing because it has some styling and printing going on. So if the answer is correct, increase the point and print an encouragement statement. If it is not correct, what do we do? So we say, put text, better luck next time. And we also give the correct answer of the jumbled word. So what you, you can do is just simply go ahead and copy the style statement and print the picked word along with it. So the correct answer is this and the style statement from whatever you have in the text file, right? And now we, if it's a wrong answer, we want to ask if they want to continue or stop. So one to continue, zero to quit. And this time we have the input type as number and not text. Now we check if the user wants to quit, we call the thank function that you already have in your code by now and so to thank you pass the name just go ahead and type the statement pass the name the points earned by the user and the total number of words played by the user and you say flag is equal to one okay there's a reason we're doing this you say flag is equal to one and you break out of the for loop now this if statement is outside the for loop that we wrote so what it's doing is it's checking if the user ever made a wrong statement Okay, not a statement if it ever gave an incorrect answer. So if it did not and the loop is done, we will ask the user if they want to continue. Okay, so let's say the user gave an incorrect statement. This question would already have been asked that if the user wants to continue or not. And hence we do not ask the user again, right? So just ask once and break. And if all the answers were correct, then and six words are done. We go and ask if they want to continue input type will be text now we convert that to lower and check if it's, if it's equal to yes go ahead and call the play function again and that's it the user will keep playing for six words again until unless they make a mistake and lastly go ahead and give this very in, important call to the play function and this isn't inside any scope okay so the python code will start executing from this statement. So please be very careful as to not put it inside any function or any loop. Finally, we're done. And I'm sure you do think that this was not a tough task at all. We have made an online game <laughs> without using any CSR, JavaScript, HTML, Django Flask, simple Python. Let's go ahead and run it. So when you run this thing, it will directly open on your browser. And let's see how it looks. And it looks pretty. So, hey, please enter your name. I'm going to give my name. Okay, so I do remember this word that I put in the list. So this will be a reverse. So you won't be getting these suggestions if it's the first time you're playing. And let's submit. So what does it do? Well done. Coming up next and your challenges. Oh, Lord. Okay, what was this? I. Oh, okay, I guess it's notebook. No, there you go. Don't mind. I have played it once, hence it keeps giving me the suggestions. This will be juice. Okay. And okay, so you see you have random encouragement statements coming up also. Next will be caliber. You can put in any word that you like. Okay, okay, that was straight. S T R E I B A H T. All right. Okay, let's let's put some uh, okay, let's let's uh, finish it off. 
so that we can see if it's absolutely fine. I guess this is the last one and I do not remember, I do not recognize what this word is. Okay, so I do not figure out what this word is. So I'm just going to give something random and let's see what it gives us. Ah, we have obviously made a mistake. Okay, so the correct answer was hesitation, which obviously I have failed to decrypt. Okay, so best of luck to you. Go ahead and enjoy playing this game. And I hope you all enjoyed making a web application using plain and simple Python. Bye-bye. I'll see you all soon.